Welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm Shannon Rogers, your host, and welcome into my shop. Not only that, welcome into kind of a, an unsung corner of my shop. The bandsaw is one of the only remaining power tools I have in my shop. The other one is a thickness planer, and I have a drill press, although I admit I haven't used the drill press very much in probably the last year or so. Um, I spend a lot of time talking about hand tools, but I think as a modern woodworker, you'll find that the bandsaw, often called the Neanderthal's Apprentice, is an incredibly valuable addition that doesn't take up much space and can really, really help the hand tool woodworker. Now, like any self-respecting glute, I like my hand saws as much as the next guy, but there are times when that hand sawing really is a lot like work. And I've got a perfect example here. I'm about to make uh, a rough frame for a, a, a Rubo style frame saw and it requires some eight quarter stock. Obviously eight quarter, ripping eight quarter is a lot more work because of the extra thickness. But not only that, because of how I have the parts laid out here, I have to make a 54 inch long rip cut. And that is a lot of work with a handsaw, especially in eight quarter material. Having the bandsaw around is a way that can allow you to quickly rip those out, save yourself some effort. But I think a lot of people also have trouble with really long rip cuts. They have trouble as their body gets tired, their technique, their body mechanics start to break down and the saw will tend to drift off the line and especially drift out of plumb. Now you're left with even more work over the bench to correct an errant cut. Setting up, assuming your bandsaw is set up properly, you can make a quick cut that'll be accurate in width and it will be dead square then all you gotta do is just run the joiner plane across it and not worry about changing that angle. Save yourself a lot of time. This is a great example because there are four parts to this frame saw I'll be making. The two long pieces are one and a half inches wide and they're 54 inches long. The two head pieces, they're only 24 inches long and three inches wide. Normally, I could come in and cross cut this to 24 inches and making a 24 inch rip cut is nothing, even an eight quarter material. But because I need these two long pieces here, I really can't do that. I mean, I could make a series of stop cuts, but that's just, it's ridiculous. It's a lot of extra work. So I can very quickly using my bandsaw, break these down into the four parts. And this is why this is called the Neanderthal's Apprentice. It's gonna save me a lot of time, it's gonna save me a lot of effort, and I can get onto the parts that I really enjoy, and that's the joinery. This board is 67 inches long. Since I only need 54 inches, I'm gonna go ahead and make my job easier and cross cut a part off the end. That is quick work done with a handsaw. Because this board is only seven inches wide, it's really very quick to make a cut using a handsaw, especially if you have a properly tuned and appropriately pitched crosscut saw for the thicker eight quarter material. I have a six PPI crosscut saw here. It's a very aggressive saw. and it just tears through this eight quarter poplar in, in no time. So now, when I go to the bandsaw, I only have to deal with the length of cut that I need. I don't have to muscle around a longer board than is absolutely necessary. I can set the fence on my bandsaw and quickly rip out all the parts that I need for this frame saw. All right, I think we're just gonna let it rock here. <laughs> them cut to width, of course I can come right back to the saw bench and very quickly rough out my two ends.
With these ends being 24 inches long, obviously my 14 inch bandsaw doesn't have the capacity to do this cross cut, but it really seems kind of silly when it takes no time at all with a handsaw. So with that, using a mixture of the bandsaw and your hand saws, I've got my four pieces roughed to the almost a final dimension. For that matter, when you buy your lumber at your sawmill, getting your mill to actually skip plane it for you is going to save a lot of effort. This board was for all intents and purposes an S4S board that was really ready to be ridden up against a bandsaw fence. If you want some more accuracy like that, of course, with a rough board, you need to plane one face and plane one edge so that it references precisely up against the fence. But also remember, it doesn't have to. You can just break it down to the rough size, do all of your milling by hand after that, get your faces, just cut everything a little bit oversized and you can bring it into final dimension. As it is, these parts are a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch too thick and probably an eighth of an inch too wide and just a little bit too long. But I'll use my hand planes, my shooting board, and the rest of my hand tools to bring them into the final dimension, and then I can start the joinery on them. Eventually, I'm going to cut a small curve to these outer profiles, and that I could choose to go right back over to the bandsaw. And I may just do that, because again, I'm dealing with a thicker material. Now, i got to be honest, that bandsaw, it needs some tuning. Those cuts were actually quite a bit slower than I could than I really wanted them to be. And honestly, with uh, my five point per inch rip saw, I probably could have made all these rip cuts faster than what I just did on the bandsaw. The feed rate I was using there was really, really slow. I'm pretty sure my bandsaw blade needs to be replaced. It's gotten dull. I know that I've got some tweaking I need to do as far as the drift. So it binds a little and has a tendency to want to bog down. That's a three quarter horsepower bandsaw. It should be more than powerful enough to cut eight quarter poplar. So in my particular instance, I probably would have done better by grabbing the rip saw, or at least faster. But the fact that I've got perfectly flat and square cuts can go a long way to someone who's just starting to use hand tools and maybe isn't that comfortable with the hand saws. So there you go, I admit it. I have some power tools in my shop, and what do you know, maybe I'm somewhat of a hybrid woodworker after all. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Sash in the basement